Hi folks, welcome back to Resin Art Creations. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I create a resin art tray. So this is part one to a two part video. So let's get started. So for this project, I'm using a spirit level, some plastic cups, lollipop sticks, mica powders from Arteza, makeup powder from Meron, gloves, a respiratory mask, two part epoxy resin, a substrate to work on, which is of course my tray, a heat gun and a blowtorch. So when working with resin, I always ensure that I work in a well ventilated area and wear a respiratory mask with integrated filters. So here I'm ensuring that the surface that I'm working on is level using a spirit level. And I also clean the sur surface area with some alcohol and uh, dry it with a diet dry cloth. Next, I'm going to be calculating the amount of resin required to create my resin tray with. I do this using the Art Resin Online Calculator. So for my tray, which is 24 centimeters in diameter, the calculator lets me know that I need approximately three ounces of epoxy resin in total. So that's 1.5 ounces of hardener and 1.5 ounces of resin, giving me three ounces in total. I am using Art Resin, which is a one-to-one -one resin and a one-to-one -one ratio resin. I pour the resin harder in one cup and mix thoroughly for approximately three minutes, scraping all the sides when doing so. So once again, I'm checking that my surface area is level to ensure that there's an equal distribution of resin on my tray. And I always pour a small amount of resin in first into my cups and then I add the mica powders. So I add approximately 10% mica powder to 90% resin. So this is Aqua Blue from Arteza and I'm mixing the mica powder thoroughly into the resin. Now, if you feel that you'd like the color to be more opaque than translucent, you can always add a little more in. Next, you'll see me adding the magenta from Arteza, and then this is then followed on by the icicle and shy from my candy. Always make sure that you do actually mix the mica powders in thoroughly into the resin. This aqua blue from Arteza is absolutely beautiful and you'll see a close-up of how beautiful this actual aqua blue is. So next I'm going to be mixing up the magenta from Arteza and once again this colour is really pretty. So this is then followed on by Icicle and Shy from Eye Candy. And these particular mica powders are absolutely beautiful once again. Um, they're very vibrant and um, yeah, absolutely stunning. So once again, I'm adding a small amount of Shy into the cup of resin and a small amount of Icicle into the other cup of resin and mixing thoroughly, making sure I scrape the sides as I do so. So here's one of my favourite golds, 
This is gold powder from Meron and it's actually for makeup artists, but many resin artists do use this in their epoxy art projects. It's a beautiful pigmented powder and a little certainly goes a long way. How gorgeous is this gold powder when mixed in epoxy resin? Absolutely stunning. So here you have the gold, the magenta, the aqua blue, white shide and icicle from eye candy so I'm just going to clean the tray with some isopropyl alcohol and a dry cloth and next what you will see me doing is pouring in some clear resin into the tray prior to adding any of the colored resin in and I'm going to ensure that the entire surface area is absolutely covered with this clear resin. This method enables the coloured resin to disperse more easily and move around more readily. So in this particular project, I'm going to be using the dirty pour technique, which is used by a lot of acrylic pouring artists. This is where I add the coloured resin in layers. So I start off with the shide white, aqua blue, magenta, marron gold and icicle. I repeat this process two to three times and add clear resin in between the colours. So here are the colours layered on top of each other, looking absolutely stunning. Now I'm going to be pouring this mixture on top of the clear resin and using the tree ring technique. This again is a technique used by the acrylic pouring community. You can see the rings forming when applying this method.
So here I'm using my blowtorch to remove any air bubbles and then using my heat gun to actually move the resin around. As you can see, the gold which I used from Meron has somewhat taken over the piece alongside the icicle and the shide from eye candy. Now this is because these three particular pigment powders are more pigmented than the Arteza mica powders and therefore they float on top whereas the other powders do sink to the bottom. It's through experimenting with different mica powders and uh, through trial and error that you'll be able to figure out which colours and brands do float to the top, which sink, which are more translucent and which are more opaque. So what you'll see me doing now is tilting the tray around. This is just to make sure that the entire tray is covered with resin and you just want to tilt it slowly but surely. Here I'm actually adding more gold and using leftover resin to create what's known as the puddle pour technique. Then I'm going to be moving this around with my heat gun again to create my desired outcome. So as the resin starts to cure and I'm happy with the outcome, I do look over the piece, remove any unwanted particles or dust which may have fallen onto the surface and then I finally cover the piece with an unused canvas. I do let the piece cure for approximately 24 hours or so before I begin layer 2 and this will be shown in part 2. So I really do hope that you enjoyed this video and will join me again in part 2. Thank you for watching. 
Oh, and before I forget, don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave me a comment. Take care, and I'll see you all soon in my next video.